and how it pertains to this whole coronavirus thing. So first, I need to read a little disclaimer here. Statements and claims have not been verified by the FDA. This product is not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This webinar may offer health, wellness, fitness, and nutritional information, and is designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on this information as a substitute for, nor does it replace professional medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment. If you have any concerns or questions about your health, you should always consult with a physician or other healthcare professional. Do not disregard, avoid, or delay obtaining medical or health-related advice from your healthcare professional because of something you may have heard or seen on this webinar. The use of this information on this webinar is solely at your own risk. Nothing stated or posted on this webinar or available through any services are intended to be and must not be taken to be the practice of medical or counseling care. For purposes of this agreement, the practice of medicine and counseling includes, without limitation, psychiatry, psychology, psychotherapy, or providing healthcare treatment, instructions, diagnosis, prognosis, or advice. So now that the kind of housekeeping is out of the way, welcome to our talk here on brain immune system and how all of that kind of ties into what we're going through right now in our life. This is a pretty unprecedented time in our, not only our nation's history, but our world's history. Never before has something been seen like this or included, you know, included worldwide. We have not just Americans being affected by this, but the whole world is kind of living this nightmare, if you will, together. Um, and with that, there's been a lot of information, a lot of misinformation, you know, a lot of good, a lot of bad, but just a lot of information in general. So we wanted to just touch base with everybody and hopefully provide some simple tips and tricks to help you get through this uh, from a neurologic and immune uh, component and kind of work through some things. So first, some introductions. My name is Dr. Michael Longyear, for those of you that don't know me, from Brain Optimization Institute, also with NeuroLife Institute at Life University up in Atlanta. And this is? I'm Megan Long Dr. Megan Longyear, and I'm with also with Brain Optimization Institute with this guy. <laughs> so we want to share with you some tips and tricks on how to boost your immune system. So all of this is very unprecedented in, in how we're dealing with this, what we're seeing. And the reality is, is even the foremost scientists on the front lines with this, they don't know everything about this stuff going on yet. We're still learning things daily. But there are some generalities that we kind of know about viruses, and we want to share a little bit about that. So first, if, if you're following this at all, or you, know, you look at the news, or right now there's a commercial on, it seems like every TV break, about the high-risk groups. So when you look at what the high-risk groups are, there, there's three of them that they highlight specifically, and we'll kind of talk through a little bit of that. Uh, first, it, and they say it like this, anybody with an immunocompromised condition. So that means an immune system that's suffering. And we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, diabetes is another one, and high blood pressure or heart disease. And if you look at all of these, or people undergoing cancer treatment, if you look at all of these conditions, there's one thread that kind of ties all of them together, and that's immunocompromised. And that means that their immune systems aren't functioning optimally or aren't functioning at their best. So in my world, if I remember my physiology from, from going to doctor school, if immunocompromised decreases or increases your likelihood of contracting this and having it be detrimental to your health and ultimately, you know, fatal if it gets to worst case scenario, it would stand to reason that doing things to improve your immune system and your immune function might help with that. So that's not to say that, you know, you're, if you strengthen your immune system and make it supercharged, that you'll never contract this virus or this condition. But what we can surmise from what we know from physiology and from health is that if you have a stronger immune system and stronger immune function, you can probably stave off the severity of the condition. So again, it's not to say that if, you're, if you think you've done everything to supercharge your immune system, you won't get it. So if you're in, you still would wanna decrease your contact with that high risk population, but strengthening your immune system will decrease your symptoms and your symptoms. We also want to talk to you about things that you may be doing that or lacking that, that you're doing that you can do to help yourself. 
um, things like not like everyone staying in the house and not being able to get out, not being able to maybe do things on your normal interactions with people, things that are healthy for your life that we've kind of had to take a step back from. So we want to go over some of the things that you may not even consciously know that you're doing that are actually harming your immune system that we can hopefully give you some guidance to help so that you can do some things at home and strengthen that and keep yourself nice and strong. Yeah. So, you know, we've, we're living in times where we're telling people to go inside more and more and, and almost hide from each other. If any of you guys have ever heard me talk or Dr. Med, that's not what we preach at all in our world. So, um, you know, we've got all sorts of hormones that are necessary for our brain and body function that come from human contact. And right now, without us being able to have that human contact, it's more important than ever to keep our immune system in check. And so as we go through some of these things, and how they negatively affect your immune system, and then hopefully some ideas on how to positively affect your immune system uh, to keep it stronger, knowing that we're already kind of behind the eight ball if we have to do this social isolation and kind of hiding from each other. So another kind of bookkeeping thing here is, if you have any questions, feel free, use the Q&A uh, at the bottom of the screen there on your Zoom call and ask the questions at the end of the webinar or if something comes up that we see that's important to cover right then and there, we will address the questions and, and hopefully answer any concerns that you guys have as it regards to this condition too. So, um, but we wanted to kind of break this down in a simple way, so we try to just go through five simple steps or five simple things that we can do to improve our immune function and hopefully help keep you guys safe and healthy, you and your family safe and healthy. Um, so drum roll without further ado. Uh, step number one, vitamin D is important. It's, uh, it's our most important. Dr. Meg was correcting me earlier when I said vitamin D. And hormone D, not vitamin, it's a hormone. For all of you guys that went to Life University, I guess there's a teacher that kind of grinds that into your brain pretty good. Um, so hormone D or vitamin D is paramount in your immune function. So vitamin D's role is to control your immune system so that it doesn't attack things that, first of all, it shouldn't be attacking, but also to mobilize the troops. So for those of you that aren't really sure what your immune system is, you maybe have heard this word over the last couple of weeks uh, or in the past, your immune system is kind of like your own forces. So if, if you have an attack coming in from the outside, whether it's bacterial or bacteria or whether it's a viral load or if it's uh, like a parasite or anything else, your body has a built-in system to help fight these things off. Your body came with the hardware and the software to fight off coronavirus, as long as we don't give it any interference or anything like that. So that's what we're talking about is, is strengthening the troops, but also the control of the troops. We know that any army is only as good as its, its commanding officers, right? So vitamin D kind of acts as part of that commanding officer troop. So we want to get vitamin D. And what's the best way for us to get vitamin D? Go and get some sunshine. Get outside, go for a walk. Down here in Jacksonville, where we're located, we're lucky that we can get outside and go walk around on the beach and you know really get some sunshine in that way. For, I know a lot of my friends that are up north, all of you Michigan people, uh, New Jersey, New York, it's a little bit chillier out there, so getting outside and then with the clouds and stuff might not be as easy, but when you do have that sunny day, get outside, get some sunshine. Let the sun really absorb into your skin. Just sit there and obviously don't burn. You don't want to get too much sun where you're causing problems, but let yourself absorb that sun. Get outside, breathe the fresh air. Yeah, and that's a good point. I know that we're kind of all on um, this house arrest kind of sort of, but um, you know, if you have a backyard or even getting out on your, your little patio, if you're in a condo, getting out on your patio is a good thing. Getting that sunshine, sunshine does a lot of benefit benefits for us, but vitamin D being one of the big things. But it's also gonna help another thing that we talked about later when we look at our sleep regulation and our sleep cycles. So we really wanna get some vitamin D into our system. Now, if you can't get outside and you live up north and you know it's not as much sun or you don't have the exposure to that, uh, there are tons of vitamin D supplements out there as well. Always consult a healthcare professional before, and we kind of did the disclaimer before, before taking vitamin D. Um, but supplements is something that we utilize here in our office with our patients. And uh, 
You know, there's lots of different forms. This isn't a webinar on which vitamin D supplement to take or which brand necessarily, uh, but some things to take into account. A lot of times liquid vitamin D is a little bit better, um, but you gotta be careful with vitamin D in the fact that it, you can actually overdose on it. So there are only a few vitamins that are toxic to your system. So you've gotta be a little bit careful with how you take it. So I usually recommend if you are gonna do something, and again, consult with your healthcare professional on this, but start with about a thousand IUs. So you can do a thousand IUs, which is the measurement that they use on the back of the bottle of a liquid B and start taking that. You'll notice some pickups in your energy level and even at a thousand, which is a fairly low dose, you won't get toxic, but it's still gonna help to support that immune function and pick you up a little bit. Um, so we really wanna try to boost that immune system as much as we can. So the other thing, uh, number two on our list, and for those of you that don't have a pen and paper for notes, you can always rewatch this. Uh, if you send us, we'll give our email and our website at the end of this. If you send us information, uh, we can get you this, uh, this recording if you can't access it, um, and even give you kind of the talking points that we used for this as well. So number two on our list is exercise. So that kind of goes along with getting outdoors. So again, knowing that we're supposed to be staying inside and we're supposed to uh, not go out and intermingle in groups of bigger than five or 10, depending on where you're at and what your stipulations are in your area, we still can get outside and walk. That's one of the things that I've noticed around us here in Jacksonville. We're fortunate to be really close to the beach. We're about a mile walk from there and we get out and walk, but people are still, they're using that social distancing, but they're not, you know, hiding in a cave, so to speak, as a result of it. So people are still getting out and walking. You know, they're being very respectful. If you do have to cross somebody on the sidewalk, most of the times people are waiting in a driveway for you to pass and then coming out or, you know, crossing into the road while you're crossing on the sidewalk. But it's been really refreshing, actually, to see how many people have gotten outside. Uh, even on the beach, people are practicing their social distancing. A lot of the beaches here are closed, the public parking lots, because they don't want people to congregate in large numbers. But you'll see people that have actually drawn lines in the sand around their group or their party uh, at about a six foot distance so that people don't get into their bubble or their space. Because we, you know, regardless of what your thoughts are on this whole thing, and I know people's opinions and thoughts vary greatly. That's the other thing that goes along with this is, you know, you've got one camp of people that, um, maybe have a high-risk family member that live with them, maybe are in the high-risk category and are taking this very seriously and, and fear is, is really a driving factor for them. And you've got the other side of people that are kind of walking around, living their life, doing their thing, uh, and everything in between that too. So regardless of whether you're on this side of the camp or you're on this side of camp, we do have to respect what everybody else is going through. So make sure you're paying attention to that, especially if you notice somebody backs up from you or something like that, don't push it. Just be kind to everybody and respect their wishes. Yeah, so with doing this, um, going out to the beach, or if it's warm enough where you live that you can get outside, take your shoes off, get into the earth, go walk in the grass, step in the dirt, really get yourself earthing, letting the negative ions really help your immune system as well, then, you know, walking in and the exercise is fantastic and definitely something that we're recommending. But if you can take your shoes off and walk barefoot and get into the earth and really absorb these, this, the earth and let, let Mother Earth help you, that's just, that with the sunshine, I mean, my gosh, you're just, you're right there, two awesome things that you're doing to help your immune system and prevent, you know, the possibility of taking on you know any viruses and germs that are going around i mean it's still you know cold and flu season so you know really doing that to help your system um there's movies too so if you're having a rainy day and you're not able maybe to get out and and walk and get outside and do stuff and you don't have access to like a little you know gym i know most gyms have been shut down and you can't really access there um watch some of the movies that that talk about like the earth thing and you know that different ideas and things that you can get out and and do to you know help kind of strengthen that immune system from different perspectives that other people have tried you know in different locations i know the earthing documentary just came out not too long ago and it had some really great ideas from people that you know live all over the world in ways that they were able to help themselves to really improve their immune system 
um, as well as there's the uh, Earthen Company, there's actually bed sheets and pillowcases that you can use that if you're not able to get out and walk around and you know really absorb all that, then you can do that while you're sleeping too. And that'll also be a big help. And Amazon is still open for business. Yes, they, they are <laughs> all over the place on the roads with their trucks. And hopefully they'll test out their drones now too and they'll just drop it off on your porch or something like that. Um, but yeah, earthing is a great way to kind of get some negative ions, a tool that we use here in the office. We use lasers to kind of build voltage in people and, and increase the amount of ions flowing through your system to help fight off some of these things. And, you know, Dr. Meg did mention a lot of gyms and, and weight loss or, or health facilities are closed right now. So what does a workout look like if I don't have my treadmill or I don't have my, you know, dumbbells or something like that? Hey, sit-ups, squats, and push-ups are still pretty good. Um, my football coach used to call it a prison cell workout where we would do burpees, uh, push-ups, squats, and sit-ups, and we would just do a circuit of that over and over again, pretty much until the first lineman dropped. Uh, so those are still really good things to do. And you don't need, as he used to joke, it's what I call a prison cell workout. He was a prison guard. Um, you don't need any more than like a, a four by four cell to be able to do that exercise. In. So even if you don't, and you're not comfortable going outside and walking up and down the street, just in front of your couch while you're watching that Netflix movie on um, earthing, you can kind of run through that circuit and just do it. But getting your body active movement is life. And so movement is gonna drive the areas of the brain that are responsible for controlling that immune function. So any kind of movement that we can do, whether it's sit-ups, push-ups, or going for a long walk in the sunshine is gonna be very beneficial to brain health and driving those areas. Because remember, the name of the game is we wanna strengthen our immune function. And you know, my world where we do a lot of brain work and we work with a lot of brain conditions, that's something we take into account with everybody is, you know, as we're strengthening the brain, we're watching how that affects immune function and how that affects immune control. And in this time right now that we're dealing with, you know, a stronger, healthier immune system is the name of the game. And movement is going to be the way to strengthen the brain to get better immune function and better health and, and keep you and your family healthier. It's also a great thing to do. You know, she was telling me about a, a really funny meme that she saw about uh, how everybody's going to come out of this. Right? I'm sure everybody's been seeing this one going around and I'm either going to come out a complete yogi and drop to weight and totally in shape or I'm gonna have a drinking problem and I'm gonna be 15 pounds heavier. Go the other way, go towards the doing even like stretching and stuff like that, getting out and exercising and trying to stay away from the, the negative loop and trying to stay in that positive loop. Because anybody knows that when you've exercised, you get that endorphin rush and you feel good, you feel better. So even just a 15, 20 minute walk, just to get moving, get your body moving, getting everything flowing, you're doing so much for your body. And that kind of leads us into number three. So, so far, just a recap, some vitamin D, sunlight is the best way to do it. Uh, if you live in Michigan, John, um, some vitamin D supplements are also a good thing uh, to help boost that vitamin D level in you and help your immune system fight all of this stuff off. And exercise is number two. So movement is going to be best. And that leads us into three. Watch what you're putting in your mouth. Um, you know, we are kind of stuck inside, so a lot of people are raiding the pantry on a more regular basis because we're not out doing things. So when we get bored, we sometimes eat out of boredom. And when we eat out of boredom, it's usually not green leafy vegetables, but it's usually things that come in a box or a container. So we want to make sure that we're putting good foods in our mouth. This is a great time to be able to experiment with new recipes. So we're always so busy, busy, busy with our life and run into this and run into that. that I mean, this is why people are so, it's so convenient to grab fast food. This is a time that we can actually take to play around in the kitchen. See what you've got hanging out in the pantry that you can kind of make into a healthy dish for your family now that you've got a little bit more time maybe on your hands. Um, fruits and vegetable section, at least where we've been, we're still seeing see a lot of that, not so much of the box stuff and the canned stuff which obviously having on hand, you know, that comes in good in a pinch, but trying to get those leafy green vegetables and taking the, you know, your fruit, making different kinds of smoothies, chia puddings, uh, chia seed puddings. 
there's so many different recipes out there that you can play around with, but you can really actually take your time to explore and find out something new about nutrition that you can add into your family's, you know, diet plan so that you're getting that whole, whole food, that nutrient food, rich food, so that your body's, your body's happier for it and stronger for sure. And this is another time, like she was talking about hitting those fruit and vegetable sections up at your grocery store. Uh, pay attention to the organics on this one because organics are going to have less chemicals and, and interfering factors in them and it'll be easier for your body to digest and handle. And so organics is going to be important if you can. I know a lot of people, you know, organics are more expensive and they're strapped uh, with the economy kind of, you know, not doing as well and people getting laid off left and right and that's one of the stressors that we'll talk about at the end of this but you know buy organics when you can if you can't you know not organic is still better than eating something out of a box or a can but uh pay attention to that if you can so whole foods green leafy vegetables are really high in antioxidants and minerals that your immune system needs to function Vitamin C is one of the biggest things you always hear. If you get a cold, take vitamin C. That's because vitamin C is an antioxidant. It's a really important part of the food system for your immune system to be able to fight off all of this stuff. So things that are high in vitamin C, citrus fruits are high in vitamin C, but also green leafy vegetables. Nobody wants to hear it, but kale has more vitamin C in it than any of your your citrus fruits even. So kale me crazy, but I'm gonna have a kale and spinach salad um, to kind of get through this. So eating foods that are more nutrient rich and nutrient dense are gonna be better for you. Unfortunately, pizza, not very nutrient dense. It's really, really good, but just not probably the best thing for driving that immune function or driving our immune system. So we wanna to try to eat as much as we can fresh foods, uh, make sure you're getting you know, all of your balance in there too, your carbohydrates, but mostly your proteins and your fats. Uh, we wanna be able to drive that immune system with those, with those fuel sources. So again, vitamin D number one, exercise number two, eating whole foods number three, and number four is sleep. Sleep is a weapon. You know, with us all being locked inside, maybe this one doesn't seem as hard as you think, but we've actually gotten a lot of calls from some of our patients and uh, people with concern over sleep that really didn't even have sleep issues before. As your stress ramps up, it um, activates areas of your brain, an area of your brain called your limbic brain, which is your deeper part of your brain. That's where we process stress and where we handle stress. It's also the survival part of our brain. So it doesn't really think about the big picture. It doesn't see past uh, little barriers in our way. And you know, I know coronavirus doesn't seem like a little barrier in our way right now, but um, it's a barrier in our way. Our, our top part of our brain or our frontal lobe is more responsible for us seeing past this virus epidemic, all of these issues, the layoffs, all of those things. So the frontal lobe is the part that allows us to get past all of that. Unfortunately, when we have fear creep in or when we have stress kind of run our system, we can't turn that part of our brain on as well. Our limbic brain gets turned on more and it starts to really run the show. So when that limbic brain gets turned on, we decrease the amount of food and resources that go to the front part of our brain. And sleep is something that suffers as a result of that. It's not real easy to close your eyes and get a restful night's sleep if you feel like you're running from something all the time or you feel like you gotta be in survival mode. So a lot of people, even though they've got more time at home, are suffering more with being able to fall asleep and even stay asleep. You know, a big part of that too, and we'll talk more, is a lot of people are spending a lot more time in front of the TV sitting at home. So we wanna limit that exposure too because all of that light coming into our retinas uh, right before we try to fall asleep is actually going to do the opposite. It's going to keep us awake and not allow us to get a full restful night's sleep. So you might be able to close your eyes for a little bit, but unless we go into that REM sleep or that deep sleep, our brain doesn't have time to heal and regenerate. So some things that you can do to help you, because we, we experience that with a lot of patients that have problems sleeping, um, tips and tricks that you can do at home. Start gargling every night before you go to bed. 15 seconds, three times, um, not with any kind of mouthwash or anything, just with warm, with water, you can warm, cold, whatever your preference is. 
Um, and try gargling every night before you go to bed. Do it in the morning as well. That's going to help calm the system down. Um, meditations. We are very big on promoting things of meditations. Getting into that the brain state like Dr. Mike was talking about where you're calming. You're not running from the tiger. You're you're able to calm that system down and realize that, yes, there is stuff going on in our world right now, but everything's going to be okay. And you realize that, like he was stating, with your frontal part, our more you know, human part of our brain. So we need to be able to calm that limbic system down and really relax it. So I know meditation is hard and most people don't commit to doing it because sitting still and being quiet if you know me, that is the hardest thing for me to sit still and be quiet. But I found that my, my stress levels and especially going through, you know, the stuff going on around us, going through school, all those kind of like things, being able to sit still and be quiet and just be in a guided meditation. Guided meditations are great. I have a bunch of recommendations. You can find them on a lot of them on YouTube. I'm happy to share any of the ones that I use on a daily basis. But getting into that routine, just start out doing five to 10 minutes a day and gradually move up, get up to 20 minutes, get up to 30 minutes. So maybe instead of sitting and watching TV shows all night and waking up parts of your brain, go ahead and do a meditation, a mindful meditation. Let somebody walk you through and guide you through it. And then you're priming your system for a restful night's sleep so that you can fall into that REM sleep a lot, a lot easier. And you're not waking up as much in the middle of the night in stress mode, like we're hearing, you know, a lot of people suffer from that, waking up in the middle of the night, not being able to get back to sleep. And that's just, that's not good for your system, especially if that's happening over and over and over again. So figuring out ways to calm that system, relaxing that system. Um, another thing that we like to use and we use with a lot of our patients, different essential oils. Um, you have to be careful the kinds that you're buying. You want to make sure that it's not, you want to make sure they're authentic and they're of quality products and you're not buying things that are, you know, um, full of chemicals and stuff that aren't good for your system, but having calming lavender, everybody's heard about lavender, drinking lavender tea, using essential oils, uh, diffusing while you're sleeping. Um, we have a whole recommendation of different ones that we like to use and that we use here in the office to help calm our patients and help them get into that parasympathetic state so that your body's primed for being able to, to heal and you're not running and fighting and, and being in that stressful mindset. Um, so little tricks like that will kind of help you and bring you down into that, that calming, that calming spot. Yeah. So it's important as we, you know, get ready for bed, turning the TV off is going to allow the brain to relax and calm down a little bit better. As Dr. Med said, some lavender tea, chamomile tea is another really popular one. Uh, things like valerian root, if you're really having trouble, uh, cause we know people are really wound up right now and that fear has kind of gotten them. When you look at research, I'm always the nerdy one talking science. Um, when you look at research, it's referred to as amygdala hijacking. So the amygdala, which is part of that limbic brain, is really running things for people right now. And it's really kind of driving that driving force. Uh, and again, back to the meditations before bed. If you don't, you don't find it easy to meditate and sit and be quiet and calm your mind and, you know, levitate on the couch or anything like that. Uh, we use something called brain tap here in the office. There's a lot of other meditations. I also do a lot of YouTube meditations. So if you don't need fancy equipment or anything like that, YouTube has some really great meditations to check out. One of my favorites is uh, a guy named Jason Stevenson. And I think I just love his, his accent more than anything. I think he's Australian. But uh, he has that calming voice, that calming demeanor that really just kind of talks you into sleep. I usually make it about 30 seconds into his meditations before I'm sleeping. And I find when I do that, both the music in the background is very good for it because uh, it plays a specific frequency that's very good for your brain, but also that tone and his delivery is very calming and relaxing. So if you do find it hard to sit and just meditate, using a guided meditation. And if you want to, again, reach out to us, ask us for the ones that we use, we'd be happy to share that. We'll provide all that information at the end. But even if you just get on YouTube and search guided meditation, try some different ones out. There's male voices, female voices, there's just music, there's you know people with talking you into and talking you through the meditation. There's some really weird ones out there if you want to astral project and go visit friends and family on the astral plane because we can't social distance 
you don't have to social distance on the astral plane. Uh, you can get right up and give each other a hug on the astral plane. It doesn't matter. But uh, so that can be a really good way to allow your system to calm down and, and get to sleep better too. So we want to try to do as many things as we can to let our system relax because going to sleep is going to allow the brain to kind of unwind and declutter our brains. And when we come back then feeling rested better in the morning, it's going to give our brain a better ability to control that immune function, control our immune system and help us keep from this disease really kind of hurting us or getting us really sick. So again, we're going to kind of keep it short, keep recapping this as we go. Vitamin D, the best source is to get outside, get some sunlight, uh, supplementation. I prefer liquids with vitamin D most of the time. Supplementation is another really good one. Uh, start with about a thousand IUs. You can find things on Amazon, your local health food stores or grocery stores. Um, exercise. So if you do and you are comfortable getting outside, going for a walk is the best thing. Again, appreciate everybody's opinions on this, regardless of where you fall on the spectrum, and keep your distance from people while you're outside walking. Give them time to pass or room to pass. If you're on the sidewalk, step off onto the grass or onto the driveway and allow people to pass, pass them on the road. Uh, don't take it personal. You know, it was interesting for me when this social distancing thing started. I started to take it personal that people were like, you know, taking a wide berth around me, but you know, it took a little while for it to dawn on me that you know, it wasn't anything against me. This is just kind of our normal right now as our country and really as our world deals with this whole thing. So vitamin D, exercise, get out and move. If you're not comfortable getting outside, uh, you know, simple things like lunges, squats, push-ups, sit-ups, those are still really great exercises. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need a I don't know what the thing is called now, where it's a TV screen that takes up half your wall and there's a weight system built into it. You don't need all that stuff. Movement is good for the brain and the brain controls immune function. So just move. Uh, even jogging in place in your living room, as long as you don't live in an apartment and there's someone below you, uh, jogging in place in your living room is probably a really good thing too. Uh, eating whole foods, green leafy vegetables, uh, fruits, other vegetables are really good at eating, you know, if you can eat organic and eat wild caught stuff, if you can't and, you know, eating green leafies that's non-organic is still better than reaching for something out of a can or something out of a box. Your immune system needs fuel in order to feed the army. So what you feed the army is going to depend on how they perform. If you feed the army good nutrients like minerals and vitamins, your army is going to be happy, they're going to fight better. So if you do get exposed to this coronavirus, you're going to be able to fight it off that much better. Um, and then sleep. We gave a bunch of tips and tools for sleep. I prefer things like guided meditation, uh, other things like Dr. Meg mentioned, essential oils like lavender, uh, chamomile, orange, different things to help calm your system. Uh, as well as turning the TV off. We want to not have that bright lit screen in our face at you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and then try to close our eyes. That light tells a little part of our brain called our pineal gland and our suprachiasmatic nucleus out there for all of the, nerd, the neuro dorks that are listening. Uh, it tells that suprachiasmatic nucleus and that pineal gland to stay awake. So it's a lot harder to go to sleep if we go from watching a TV show, especially if it's something like a crime drama or something like that, because now our system's even more wound up with fear. It's going to be a lot harder to go to sleep. So, you know, the last thing, if you are going to watch TV and that's your normal routine, watch a comedy before bed. Don't watch, you know, something scary or something dramatic. Again, that's going to, in this time of heightened awareness or hypervigilance, that's going to give our body the ability to calm down a little bit better. If we're laughing right before we go to sleep versus trying to figure out who killed Roger Rabbit. Um, it's going to be a lot better for our system. And the last thing that we want to talk about that affects our immune system, the number one driver and uh, inhibitor of our immune function is stress. When we live in stress, we drive that limbic brain again. We keep our system all wound up. Our amygdala kind of runs the show and it decreases immune function. There's some studies out there that show that a detrimental life event will keep your immune system turned off or turned down for up to five days. 
Well, it seems like every time we turn on the news, there's a detrimental life of that happening, not only in our city or state, not only in our country, but worldwide. So right now in this time of hypervigilance, we're kind of turning our immune system down. That's why we thought it was really important to get out here and share some of these ideas with you because we wanted you guys to have the ability to boost your immune system because the stressors aren't going away right now. If we're going to watch the news and keep up with this thing, um, unfortunately, we're going to have stress in our life and we're going to have to find ways to get around that and deal with it. And we're going to have to find ways to improve our immune system in the in the midst of all of this. And we wanted to share with you a technique that we give to a lot of our patients and that you can do simple at home that will help turn off that limbic brain. So in our office, we use something called NET. And we'll talk about how we're actually gonna be launching that in a kind of a telemedicine way, not true NET, but something to help for more severe cases. But part of what Dr. Scott and Deb Walker created with NET is they created this thing called the FAST technique. And it's a way for you to turn down your limbic system in the midst of danger. If you're not at your doctor's office when you go through a, a detrimental event or a stressful event or a panic attack, the FAST technique is a really good way to kind of clear your system of that stressor and activate or get back into that higher brain or that frontal lobe, which allows you to see past those stresses. So, um, having what we call stress relief techniques. And again, exercise is a really good stress relief technique. You know, Dr. Hall, my mentor and friend always tells us, you know, the best way to, to keep your stress level down is for guys, go to the gym and throw some weights around. For girls, get out, go for a walk with a girlfriend and solve the world's problems. And those are both really good if you're comfortable walking with a friend or, you know, a loved one that you're already living with and exchanging air with every day anyway. Uh, getting out and going for a walk is a really good thing. And for guys, if you can, you know, kind of push it either at the gym or with your with your workout in the house, uh, those are good stress relief techniques. But this is also a really good way and something that we use to decrease the energy the energy of all of the stress that's going on around us. Um, so Dr. Meg is going to kind of walk you through uh, how we do the fast technique and teach it to you guys so that you guys can utilize it. And when we, when we tell people, at least when I, with my patients and, and my population, Dr. Meg may have a different opinion on this. When I tell people to do this, is anytime you realize your physiology changes in your body. So anytime you notice that maybe you can feel your heart right now, or you're, you feel that it's hard for you to catch a deep breath as a result of a stressful situation, or you just have that mind movie kind of playing over and over that loop that's going and it's negative, uh, that's something or a time that we would use this technique. So we would kind of hook up on these points and breathe until you feel a change in any of that. So you feel your breathing gets easier, the mind movie stops, or that feeling in your chest or your stomach or your head kind of goes away. So uh, use it in those times, in those times of stress. So. So I'm similar uh, as Dr. Mike when I explain it to my patients um, that you get that feeling, you, something stressful, something's triggering a response. So we want to calm that down. And I found this technique, um, I mean, we see it with our patients, but myself personally, that if I am getting ramped up of all the news reports that are coming up, all the things that are going on, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to just, sometimes you don't even know what emotion am I feeling. I'm just feeling all these emotions, but my chest feels heavy or I've got this upset stomach or just a, a, a cramp in my, in anywhere. Your body's going to harbor different emotions in different areas and different organs. And that's your body telling you that I'm not okay. And we want to be able to address that and help the body. And that starts with, with working uh, through the brain. The brain is, is where all these, these thoughts are being triggered to play these little these little movies, uh, like Dr. Mike was saying, or like we like to refer to them as limbic loops, that it's just playing in the back of your mind over and over again. And when it's doing that, it's triggering you to respond and see and act in a certain way because that is a threat. It's teaching, telling you that there's a threat in my environment and I'm upset, I'm worried, I have to figure out how I have to get through this. So doing this FAST technique, um, which stands for First Aid Stress Tool, so the FAST technique will help just kind of calm that down. Um, we use this, uh, the NET that Dr. Mike was talking about, we use that in our office to help completely work through that limbic loop that you have firing and playing in your mind. But this FAST technique is just great in times like this where 
we can't maybe get together and be able to to do the NET, but we can calm the system down and let it just kind of just that energy just kind of dispel that things are going to be okay. We're giving attention to that event and we're using acupuncture points to kind of calm that down so that it's not ramping us up and making our body go into, I'm running from a tiger. I have to panic. I have to, I have to flee and we can just be calm so that our immune system can actually work and like it's like properly supposed to. So when we do this technique, um, so you're going to take, uh, you use both of your hands. So I'll do this on Dr. Mike. I'm going to hold his hand up here. So on the thumb side, you're going to take three of your fingers and they'll be placed on this thumb side here. So how it looks is you'll take your other hand, take those three fingers, so make the three fingers like this. Scout's on her. I'm going to do it like this. And those three fingers get placed on the inside, just like this. So right underneath the thumb there, one, two, three. Those are the pressure points, the meridian, acupuncture meridian points. And there's different ones on each wrist. So when we do this technique, when you contact those spots, you contact them on your, on your uh, wrist, then you're gonna place your hand over your forehead. The two acupuncture meridian points here are our emotional points. So by connecting with their fingers, the three fingers, and then our, our hand over our forehead, covering those two emotional points, you're gonna to wanna to close your eyes. I like to bring my elbows down to my knees so that you're kind of in that cuddled fetal position, that safe position and just breathe. Be in that space, be in that emotion, allow yourself to feel wherever it is. If you feel it in the back of your neck, you're feeling it in your chest, in your stomach, and just breathe. Then when after you feel that kind of change, you're gonna switch over to the other side because there's different meridians that connect to different organs. So then you'll be on the opposite side. Other hand. Place it again over here, and you can just switch like this. You don't have to Consciously sit up and just stay in that position and just be going back and forth and make sure that you're covering those two um, meridian points, the emotional points here on our forehead and just breathe and be in that moment and just, just let any feelings that come up, any thoughts that come up and just breathe through them. And you'll notice that after switching back and forth, there's no certain amount of time that you have to keep your hands on each side of the wrist. Whatever you feel intuitively, you just going to switch, I'm going to switch and breathe and be still in that moment and you'll feel just a shift and a change in that energy that that's just kind of calming down like it's diffusing and you just keep doing that you can do this as many times during the day as you need to you can stay in this position as long as you need to and just breathe and be conscious of that emotion and where it is in your body and just giving that that attention connecting the circuit and breathing through it and you'll notice a pretty big difference if you continuously are doing this when you feel those emotions come up and you or that perseverating thought that you are stuck on to give acknowledgement to it and do this, do this technique and just breathe. Yeah, and what we're doing, the reason we hook up to these uh, traditional Chinese medicine points or acupuncture points that are on the wrist is what we've, they've found over 5,000 years of being around is that we harbor some of these emotions when we go through them. We harbor them in our meridian systems and we kind of hold them in different parts of our body and, you know a lot of different techniques talk about different ways uh, with which we hold emotions in our body you know there's a book called the body keeps the score about how we all of the events that we go through in our life they're harbored somewhere in our system this is a way for you to connect to that energy and release it and you're stopping and you're breathing through it which is actually activating your brain, the higher centers of your brain, and kind of disconnecting that limbic brain in a sense. So neurologically, what they've shown with research using techniques like this is that it shuts off that limbic response, it turns down that amygdala, it turns down that little devil on your shoulder, essentially, and it allows you to realize that even though this was stressful and this sucked and you're in the moment, you're gonna be able to get past it and you're gonna be okay. And that's really what we all need to know right now is that it's gonna be okay, that, you know, we'll get this, we'll get through this kind of, I love the, the hashtag alone together for some reasons that don't like it for other reasons, but um, you know, as a group, as a whole, we'll all get through this in one way or another and, and come out the other side with it. Um, you know, kind of as we wrap this up, uh, a couple of just, points is 
this is these tips and tricks are all really good things that you can do at home for people that are experiencing stress that's manageable. Um, these are things that can help you keep that immune system boosted, keep your stress level low. If you really feel like you're struggling, consult a healthcare professional. Um, if you, you know, that racing heart that you're getting or the panic attacks, if none of this stuff helps to calm those things down, get, get with somebody. There's a lot of places you can do telemedicine. We're actually launching telemedicine here at the office where we're going to be able to do a version of, of, you know, emotional techniques or stress relief techniques that we can do via telemedicine uh, to help. We're going to do some different brain exercises and brain activities, as well as do some other stress relief techniques. And we're doing free 15 minute consults for anybody that wants to. Uh, we'll give you the information for our website and our phone number and stuff at the end. Uh, but for those of you that this stuff just isn't getting it all figured out or handling it as well as you need to, we are there. We're still going to be here. We're actually still open in the office. The state of Florida has allowed us to be. We're taking all of the essential uh, risks you know, into account, and we're doing all of the things that we need to to decrease your risk of contracting anything uh, while we're still allowed to remain open. Um, you know, Because as good as the telemedicine is and, and all of this stuff, you know, my personal opinion is the human to human contact and the person to person is still the best if that's an option. But in the world that we're in right now, that may not be an option much longer. We may be decreasing our ability to get those things. So, you know, we want to be able to offer everybody something uh, to be able to help because these are times where people need, in my opinion, what we do and they need healthcare and healthcare professionals more than ever. Uh, we need to be able to manage our stress. We need to be able to keep our brains and our immune system healthy and functioning. And the hospitals are overloaded with the patients that are sick and that are having respiratory issues, those people that are in the high-risk categories that have contracted this. So, you know, you don't necessarily have the option to go to the hospital with some of these conditions. So reach out to us. We'd be happy to help uh, kind of walk you through it or talk you through it or do the therapies that we have developed to kind of be over telemedicine to help you out with all of that. Again, if some of these things aren't working. We also can do much more extensive dietary things and supplement things with people for immune system. There's some supplements that are out there that, uh, again, we don't know a lot about the coronavirus, but with other viruses have been proven to help break down proteins associated with the virus or, you know, the biofilm that we know, we do know is surrounding the coronavirus specifically. So there are some supplements out there that have been shown to be beneficial with other ones. If you have questions about those or need some help with that, again, feel free to reach out to us. We want to be a resource for you on that. Um, you know, the biggest thing is hopefully this is in our life forever and it won't be. We have to get back to being able to be around each other because ultimately as much as social distancing is a part of our world right now, uh, don't forget when this is all over and this all calms down, we need to get back to being around each other. We're one of two animals on the planet that has to have that social interaction for a healthy brain. So when this is all over, don't be afraid to, you know, give somebody a hug or, you know, reach out to a friend and get together face to face and in person. You know, something Dr. Kevin said in the office here, uh, when all of this thing kind of started, you know, I know my travel plans, I was supposed to be gone every weekend for the next two months at a conference or teaching somewhere. And we were going, you know, to different places to work with some patients as well. Uh, and all of that got canceled. So we canceled a whole bunch of flights and a whole bunch of travel plans. And Dr. Kevin really put it in perspective and he said, you know, maybe the whole world kind of manifested this. We've been so go, go, go and, and driving so much. This has kind of allowed us to take a step back and maybe spend some time with family. You know, I've talked to my mom and my brother more on the phone in the last two weeks, I think, than I did in the last two years combined. Uh, and my dad as well. So this is a time for us to stop, reconnect with some of those people, even if it's on video chats, like what we're doing here, um, or other ways, get to be with family. Like Dr. Meg said, maybe this is a time to not call DoorDash, but to expand your palate and maybe cook some food inside, stop and smell the roses, so to speak, or activate that parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest, digest, and rebuild, and, and activates that immune system by smelling the food as you're cooking it and going through those things. If you don't know how to cook, uh, go on YouTube, and there's tons of recipes and things like that, or Food Network, or all sorts of those things, and explore some of those, and expand your horizons a little bit. So, 
The biggest thing to be kind to one another. We're all going through this together. All of us worldwide. I've never seen anything like this, that the whole world was affected at the same time by this. You know, again, depending on where you fall on the spectrum of, you know, this is scaring me half to death and my heart won't stop jumping out of my chest to why is everybody making a big deal about this? We have to respect all of those viewpoints. And, you know, especially if you're on the, why is everybody making such a big deal about this? You gotta respect that some people don't want you to come give them a hug or shake their hand or get up into a personal space. You really have to respect where they're at from, with this. Uh, and we have to respect, you know, the rules and the laws that are put forth. If we have to stay inside, we have to stay inside. But there's other ways to get sunlight on our skin. There's other ways to exercise and definitely other ways to kind of calm down before bed. So hopefully these five tips were healthy. I'm gonna recap them here right now. Vitamin D is important. Sunlight is the best way to get it. Supplementations are another way. I typically prefer liquid vitamin D supplements. Uh, we had a question come in about how much do you supplement with if you're not in a place like we're fortunate enough to be in Florida, so sun is abundant. But what happens if you're you know, in a place where sun's not necessarily an option some, some of the days or, or any of the days? We're both from Michigan, so we know what it's like to not see the sun for 30 days straight. Uh, vitamin D supplementation is a really good place to start. Always consult a healthcare professional on how much. It's not going to be harmful to start with, you know, 1,000 to 5,000 IUs to really boost that immune function, especially if you're not getting any sunlight at all, 5,000 IUs won't be too much for you. But vitamin D can build up in your system and cause a toxicity, so make sure you're checking with somebody on that. If you are comfortable getting outside and getting into the sun, exercise outdoors, going for a walk, again, Pay attention to people's bubbles. Pay attention to that social distancing while you're outside walking. Um, is a really great way to make your brain healthy, to control that immune function. And again, the immune system is those soldiers, those warriors that are going to go out and fight this thing. And I want to clarify something too, because we we had this question come in a lot too. Um, you've had some people going on whether it's TV or radio and saying, well, there's no uh, link between, you know, immune function and contracting the virus. And I know a lot of my friends were like kind of up in arms about this statement. The reality is, is they might be right. Your immune system won't necessarily, it doesn't jump out of your system and go fight things in the air. But when you do get it, your immune system is what's gonna fight it off and keep you from developing symptoms or from the symptoms getting worse. So, or from you, you know, ultimately ending up with the most severe form of this, which is, is fatal. So you're having a strong immune system will keep you healthier. It doesn't mean having a strong immune system uh, won't allow you to, you know, won't allow you to be around people. You still should social distance, especially from high risk populations, if you think you might have gotten it. Um, but it'll help you fight it off and stay healthy longer and fight through these things. Uh, so again, exercise is a big thing. The third thing, whole foods, eat green leafy vegetables, fruits, vegetables, things that are mineral dense and nutrient dense. That's the food for your soldiers. And the better your soldiers eat, the better they'll be able to go fight off all of these bacteria, viruses, anything that really comes into your world. Sleep is a weapon. Um, falling asleep, staying asleep, trying to get that eight hours. Again, easier said than done, but meditations are a great way, guided meditations. You can go on YouTube and search just guided meditations for sleep or sleep meditations, and there's a lot of great ones. One of my favorites is Jason Stevenson. Uh, we use a lot of some of Joe Dispenza's stuff as well. If you have those, they're not really on YouTube, but um, or just some calming frequencies and music and things like that. Again, reach out to us if you have more specific questions. But sleep is going to be really important. Turn off the TV a little bit. You can utilize essential oils like lavender and some of those things to help calm your system down. Things like valerian root are going to be really helpful too. And the last one, that fast technique that, that Dr. Med taught you uh, to re release those emotions release some of those issues as they're coming up. I'm very passionate about the emotions and the thoughts and that we're playing in our minds. And, um, and I, I, that is a, just a big thing that I want to get across is that being in that fear state is just, it's, it, I, I understand that there's so much going on that can, can provoke that, 
but being in that mind frame and constantly having those thoughts of fear and what are we going to do? People are getting laid off. There's no toilet paper. There's no, you know, foods, you know, at different grocery stores and stuff. There's a lot to be fearful about, but staying in that mind frame, keeping those thoughts going actively and not trying to do things to quiet that part of the brain is, is just, it's a bad place to be. And there are some really great things that you can do to help quiet that down, to quiet, calm, calm those emotions and calm those thoughts down so that you're not in that survival. I've, I'm not going to get through this. The, the world's going to end all these bad things that I'm hearing people all around me talking about. It's, it, we have to remember that it's, it's we're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And we're here for each other to help each other get through this. So please do reach out if there's anything further, you know, questions that you have, or um, if you need a little bit more of an explanation of how to do the fast technique, give it a try um, and, and do it multiple times during the day. Show your family, do it with your family. And just really try to get that fear to just kind of get, get push it down so that we can get into more of a loving state and being kind with each other and being in that healthier part of our brain instead of being in that survival place. Yeah, because coming from a place of love is going to keep our vitamin or keep our system healthier and happier. Um, so, you know, we really need to push to come from that place right now. Uh, I want to give the information here really quick about how you can get in touch with us if you need to. Uh, our website is www.brainoi.com. So B-R-A-I-N, like your brain. O-I, like optimizationinstitute.com. Uh, you can also get us at healthandallergy.com as well. And our phone number is 904-900-1477. So if you or if you know anybody that's really struggling with stress and they need a little bit more, we're, again, we're doing free consultations with people to help walk them through some of this stuff. And uh, we're doing telemedicine to to hopefully provide a service for those of us that need it, those of us that can't get outside or aren't comfortable getting out. Our offices are still open uh, for that person-to-person -person contact too, because again, I still think that's healthy as long as you're doing it in a respectful way and you're respecting how to fight this thing and keep it from taking over. Um, we did have a question come in. So do you have a preference on vitamin C tablets, powder, liposomal dosage per day? Um, we have a few that we utilize here in the office. I love the powders because the powders turn into a liquid form. I don't really want to get into promoting any specific brand on a webinar, but if you reach out to us, I'd be happy to share what we utilize and the, the supplement that we're actually taking for it. We've actually put together some immune boosting protocols as well uh, that have a few different supplements and then vitamin C being part of it. Um, but yes, I, I like powder and I like liposomal. Uh, both are really good. Your body absorbs them better and it's more readily available for your system. Great question. So if there aren't any other questions, uh, we'll kind of wrap up this. We had a few come up as we were talking and we answered them. Uh, hopefully the person that put up the vitamin D1, hopefully we answered your question about uh, you know, dosage there, again, starting off at one to 5,000 is gonna be, um, it's going to be a good dose. If you're not getting any sunlight, 5,000. If you're down here in the sunny state of Florida, you can start off at like one, maybe 3,000. Because again, vitamin D can build up toxicity. If you do have a healthcare practitioner you can reach out to, if you want to reach out to us, we can better tailor that dose for you uh, based on what you've got going on and make sure we keep you from getting the toxicity build up. Um, there is a link to be able to watch this again. Um, what, what we'll do is we'll post the link to this video on our Facebook page, Brain Optimization Institute. It'll also be on the Health and Allergy Facebook page. Um, we'll post the link to this as well. And we're probably gonna take little short snippets and, and put these on our Facebook and Instagram stories here in the future too. So you'll be able to get them that way also. So another good question, thank you. Any other questions from anybody? And again, if questions come up after this webinar is over, feel free to reach out to us. Um, again, brainoi.com, our phone number 904-900-1477, and we'll take your calls and take your questions. Uh, we also 
Yeah, the, the link that uh, you signed up for this Zoom meeting, uh, the email that's on there, the support at healthandallergy.com. You can always respond to that if you are interested in setting up a consultation or if you had specific questions, um, that goes to our uh, office manager and so we'll be able to get those, um, those responded to you in a timely manner. But you also can reach out to us at either the healthandallergy.com website or our brainoi.com website as well. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for attending. Hopefully uh, you got some good information and you know, just to kind of wrap up, remember be kind to each other. Thank the nurses and doctors that are dealing with this on the front lines in the hospital. Uh, and even people that um, ironically, I don't think ever plan on being frontline people like the guys in the grocery store. Um, they're, you know, we've seen some reports. We've actually talked to some people that are terrified to go to work right now because of this, but they can't afford not to. Uh, and you know, with a lot of people losing their jobs and things like that, people are terrified of it. So, you know, pay attention to that too. Those guys that are stocking the toilet paper back up in the shelves faster than we can take it off, um, are, uh, they're frontliners on this whole thing. And, and that's not necessarily a job that they would have thought that on. So, you know, thank them if you're out and about and having to pick up provisions and, um, you know, just again pay attention to everybody's thoughts and opinions on this so thank you guys for coming if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us again the link to watch this uh, webinar again will be on our facebook pages uh, optimization institute facebook as well as the brain optimization institute instagram as well so thank you guys have a great day hope uh, you and your family stay safe